as she calls him, we gather in such an unfortunate manner, uh, but we do come together to honor and love your beloved daughter, Stephanie. So without further ado, I would like to introduce and welcome those who have joined us via Zoom. Uh, I would like to introduce Rabbi Bradley Bleefield, who will lead us in this afternoon's ceremony. Rabbi. What do we say when the natural order of the universe is turned upside down? What do we say to grieving parents when the natural order of things has been completely reversed? Words are so difficult to find but perhaps the most important thing at a time like this, Barbara for you and Ronnie for you, is that we just show up. Our presence here and the presence of all the people in the community, your patients, your friends, your colleagues, everyone who knows you and knows of this terrible tragedy has no doubt reached out to you and will continue to do so with the hope that perhaps someday the grief you're feeling will be softened and you will be able to once again feel some sense of light in your lives because today has to be the darkest day you've ever experienced. So I, I wish, I know we all wish that there wasn't a COVID barrier between us, that we could embrace you. But we do so with words and our spirits and our sentiments in the hope that together we can keep you buoyant through the days and weeks and months to come. Perhaps, perhaps the psalmist will be able to give you some comfort. And I'd like to offer the words of the 23rd Psalm in the hope that as you hear these words, they will bring you some measure of comfort and consolation in the face of the loss of your dear daughter, Stephanie. Mismola David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me, in the presence of mine enemies, thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, so that you might dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the face of a loss like this, We puny human beings can't really find the words to explain, to somehow 
understand what has happened. We can't. We try. We do our very best and we struggle. And we hope that whatever we can say will bring you some measure of comfort. And so we all come up to you and we all say we're sorry. We express our, our regret, our sadness, and the difficulty we have in trying to understand what we doubt you find to be impossible. So if, if we have difficulty finding the words, Ronnie, we know you're going to speak, but we have to be asking ourselves the question, how are you able to find the words? To express yourself and what you and Barbara have been feeling and saying to each other and the silence in these last days and the tears of these last days, we can only hope and pray that you're speaking about Stephanie, you're speaking about your pain and your loss will somehow be therapeutic and will help you in the depth of your sadness to go on and to continue and for the two of you to continue to be the parents that your son Gregory desperately needs from you because you will because you must because you love him so Ronnie we we beckon you here before us because we know you wish to speak Being here as the father of Stephanie is the hardest thing to do. Barbara and I would like to thank you all for coming. We are truly touched that you care enough to show your support across and respect for Stephanie this way. During the past few days, many members of our family and friends have called and visited us to show their love for us and for Stephanie. Our memories of this very sad time in our lives will therefore not all be difficult. But now I would like to speak to you about Stephanie. How do you distill a lifetime of memories and experiences into a eulogy? Stephanie had a family who loved her infinitely. Infinitely. She was awesome. She was the most thoughtful and caring sister for Gregory. She was beautiful, talented, had a certain style, intelligent, and high spirited. Her sense of humor and caring were remarkable. Steffi was kind, a friend to anyone would let her or him into her life. She cared for any sad dog that would she encounter. Stephanie overcame challenges, whether by circumstances or things out of her control. Her lives have changed forever. We love you, Stephanie. Oh, always have and always will.
dear friends, Mark and Ina, we know you wish to address us this morning. These remarks expresses the feelings of the entire Levitsky and Kaufman families. Everyone, everyone here today and on Zoom has known and loved Stephanie. There's not enough time to adequately describe Stephanie as a person of what she meant to all of us. However, I will try. Stephanie was very special. She was intelligent, she was kind, she was compassionate. She was caring. No, she was beautiful inside and out. She was a great sunshine. She was always generally interested in the lives of her friends and her families and always had a smile on her face. She adored her parents and grandparents. When I was struggling about 10 years ago, she would call me frequently and attempt to help me through the difficult time that had consumed me. When I was sick of COVID several years ago, Stephanie would call to see how I was feeling and how I was progressing. There were never any short conversations with Stephanie. She always knew what to say to make you feel better. She never complained about her own difficulties. Barbara Ronnie, you are blessed and devoted and loving daughter. Her last two and a half years were difficult from a medical standpoint. We had the privilege of spending time with Stephanie last September during her visit home. She was the delightful Stephanie, gorgeous, talkative, and smiling. We were fortunate that we were blessed to have been able to see Stephanie spend time with her. She was the type of daughter everyone would dream of having. Barbara and Ronnie, we hope and pray that your memory of Stephanie Will bring smiles to your faces. A hero of mine, Jim Balbano, was a head coach of the North Carolina State basketball team. He had cancer. He unfortunately died in his mid 40s. Prior to his death, he was awarded by SPN for the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. In his acceptance speech, and I quote him, he said, no matter how sick I am, they cannot take away my mind, my heart, or my soul. Stephanie went through many trials and tribulations during her life. She never lost her, her bright mind, her big heart, or her huge soul. Sorry. Stephanie, you are finally at peace. No more unpleasant trips and stays to a hospital. May your memory be a blessing to all your family and friends. You are so special and will always be remain in our hearts. Our thoughts. Amen. It's now a little too late. Stephanie was a ray of sunshine. She lit up a room with her smile, her energy, and of course, her sense of fashion. 
As my husband mentioned, she was always concerned for our well being when we were going through difficult times, no matter if they were human or canine. I kept up to date with Stephanie's recent difficult health issues through my conversations with Barbara. Last week, I decided that I would call Stephanie just to talk and catch up as we, as we have done in the past. So I wrote myself a note, call Stephanie, and I put it in my study with all of the other notes of the things I had to do. Calls to Stephanie were more like delightful visits. So I wanted to leave adequate time for the call. I said to myself, I'll call Stephanie next week when I have more time to talk. Next week came for me, but it didn't come for Stephanie. So please, if you want to honor Stephanie's memory, think of her and don't wait, make that call. I understand that across the internet waves and through Zoom, that dear friend, our dear friend, Sally Bagan, is with us and wishes to speak. At this point, I'm going to ask anyone else uh, if they'd like to speak to unmute themselves. I tried to unmute Sally. Um, Barbara, Ronnie, we are so devastated by this. We can only imagine how you guys feel. We are sorry. Derive some strength and courage from the fact that you both have devoted so much to Stephanie over her life and have produced as best a person as you possibly can under the circumstances. Our hearts go out to you and we pray for you. We love you. Hi, this is Jennifer Garwood. Um, I'd like to thank the Lawrences for allowing me to share a few words in honor of Steph. Um, Stephanie and I met in Mrs. Peacock's first grade class. She was a gregarious extrovert who took this timid introvert under her wing. Little did I know then the impact that her friendship would have on my life. I would love to share some things I adored most about my friend. Stephanie's personality was joyful and magnetic. She was a light who radiated warmth to those around her. Her laughter was always sincere and her smile bright, and they will be forever sealed in the minds of those who loved her, in my mind. I have so many wonderful memories of Steph. Playing school in her basement, 
emulating her mom and Mrs. Levitsky's neighborhood walks by doing laps around her house, talking about important things like how our dolls came alive when we left our rooms. I have memories of dancing and cheering and 4-H events and running around the soccer field of celebrating birthdays and so many other milestones together. So many happy times growing and learning about life together. Stephanie was a curious and brave human, a talented artist, a beautiful writer, and an eloquent speaker. As her friend, I was in awe of everything I watched her tackle and succeed at. Her strengths taught me so much. She was the yin to my yang. I would never be who I am today without her friendship. In fact, my relationship with Steph helped me learn what a friendship could be and what it should be. On my wedding day, Steph read a poem by E.E. E. Cummings, and I would like to read the last stanza back to her now. Here's the deepest secret nobody knows. Here's the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart, I carry it in my heart. Steph, thank you so much for sharing your heart with me. It will go wherever I go. Your friends love you and miss you so much, but we will carry your light with us always. Thank you. Did we have any? I would like to speak, please. Hi, I'm Carol Williams, and I wanted to say a few words, if I can get through them. Um, I was actually lucky enough to have a chance to speak with Stephanie just last week. She sent me a message uh, via Facebook Messenger of a yellow rose and um, something about the importance of friendship. She would do this out of the blue from time to time. I was able to get right back to her with a similar message. I'm going to keep those messages for myself. However, this sparked a phone date, phone date, as we called them and have for the last few years. They usually lasted an hour and this one lasted significantly more. Our conversations tended to be a little one-sided because everybody knows Stephanie loves to talk. <laughs> but she always started our conversations asking me what was going on in my life and how my family was and my kids and my parents. And she always asked me how teaching was going. She was always really interested in that. I happened to tell her once that my normally very reserved personality was very different in the classroom. And I think it fascinated her. We never really talked about it because I didn't want her analyzing me, at least out loud. I know she was doing it in her head. Anyway, this conversation would always spin back to her and then she would launch into everything that she was up to. Um, followed by some of the most obscure high school stories that would have us both hysterical by the end of the conversation. Last week's version involved two people I hadn't thought about in years. It was amazing how she could remember in such detail that long ago. Anyone who knew Stephanie probably had similar stories of introduction. She basically would approach you and declare that you would be friends. She was incredibly bold and sure of herself, and she drew people in like a magnet. Of course, her physical beauty made her stand out in a crowd, but she also had a fashion sense that would keep her above and beyond. Her Doc Martens in high school were my favorite, and she'd be happy to know that she would be back in style with high schoolers today. Steph never blended in, and we all loved her for it. 
some of my favorite memories were in our senior year gym class. She was my favorite dancing partner. We took every type of dance offered. Jazz with Mr. Breach and his Gloria Estefan, I still can't hear turn the beat around without being right back in that gym class dancing with Stephanie. We took country line dancing and social dance, waltz, foxtrot, the jitterbug. Stephanie always owned a dance floor. She was so much fun to be around. She was beautiful and intelligent and just amazing. Her voice always brought a smile to my face and the years would melt away in an instant. I will miss my friend greatly and I will always cherish our last conversation because it ended with both of us saying I love you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm going to ask one last time if anyone would like to share. China, you have Sally's This is from Sally Dayton. Needless to say, I am sorry that I am, am unable to be here with you today, but I want to share with you some wonderful memories of sweet Stephanie. She was the little girl who walked on her tippy toes. Would she be a dancer? The lovely young lady posing for pictures with her prom date or swimming in our pool with her high school friends. It goes without saying, if Stanley were here, he would share with you the special day he spent with Stephanie. I think it was when she was sweet 16. They went to Philadelphia on a shopping spree and to have afternoon tea in the big city. They were in his convertible with the top down just the two of them. I will never know who had more fun. Stephanie loved all things big and small, especially her hamster, or was it a gerbil, wiener woo. Then there was her precious dog, Princess, who even her dear brother, Gregory, learned to love too. Over the years, Stanley and I received notes and wonderful letters from Stephanie. This past Valentine's Day, Stephanie sent me a card. It said, quote, a smile is always the perfect accessory, unquote. And so I will always remember Stephanie's beautiful smile. Stephanie quoted Helen Keller in this card, the same quote that I had cut out of a newspaper one day, perhaps 40 years ago, and taped it inside my kitchen cabinet. Quote, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart, unquote. I called to tell her how nice it was to receive her card, and we laughed about liking the quote by Helen Keller. That was the last time we spoke. Dear Stephanie, had such a good heart, open to expressing so much love and kindness. Barbara and Ronnie. We hope that the words you've been hearing will give you a sense of support and comfort because you yourselves know 
how much love, how much goodness, how much wonder you two brought into this world when you brought Stephanie into this world. And perhaps just knowing that you are capable of that kind of gift will strengthen you in the times to come. You provided the world a woman who, as we've heard several times, who was so beautiful outside, it was obvious. But her inner beauty became evident when she spoke, when she transformed what she learned into what she could teach. Her sense of, of perfection and doggedness in getting her degrees, because after all, you know, and perhaps you all know, she was the girl voted most likely to succeed. And she did. And her success was transformed into every human being who came into her life. At the crisis center, all around her, friends and colleagues and neighbors, your friends, your neighbors, you created such a fabulous daughter that no matter who had a problem, she was the one who wished to fix it. And probably could. What an incredible gift you gave to the world. We just mourn that that gift wasn't here long enough. What an amazing sister to Gregory. She was his knight in shining armor. So devoted to her, to him, as he to her. She would make sure that he could be in her presence and never once feel anybody's bonds and slave because she was his protector. Not all siblings are capable of that. You created that. There is no question that this is a great tragedy. So what do we do in the face of tragedy? One of two responses. We either become more bitter or we become more tender. Try and be more tender. For everything she wished to be and was and everything she wished to be and no longer can. Be more tender. In the face of another's pain, soften that pain. In the face of a creature other than human who needs the tender touch and consolation of a human, be that tender. continue what she loved and what she wished to be. I, I began by saying, this is the darkest day of your lives. But allow the very simple observation of what you see in front of you to help you. Try to look beyond the darkness of the casket to what is just behind the casket. A 
life. The life of Stephanie's life. Look beyond to the life that was Stephanie. That will always be Stephanie in your life, in the lives of everyone who met her and spoke with her and laughed with her and cried with her and lived with her. If you can, may you look to the light and be comforted in knowing that her light has not gone out. It has just returned to eternity. And in some way beyond our record, that light will always illuminate the world. Adonai Natan Vadonai Lakah Yehi Shem Adonai Muborah God grants and at some appointed time beyond our reckoning, God redeems. And at both times, we are beckoned to respond. Blessed be the name of God. Blessed be God for giving this world through you, your beautiful, beloved, eternally brilliant Stephanie. Stephanie Joy. May the joy that she was, the joy that she will always be, warm your heart and gladness for you and everyone who grieves with you. Amen. We rise for the El Moleva. El Mole Rachamim Shochein Bam Romim, Am Tsemenucha Nepona. God full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest unto Stephanie's soul, for she has departed from this world. Lord of mercy, bring her into thy presence and let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be thou her possession. And may her repose be peace, peace eternal. Amen. We recite the Kaddish. Yiskadal v'yiskadash shemei rapa, v'yalma divarat irusei v'yamlich mahusei. The Chaye Chon of Yome Chon of a Chaye de Paul Base Yisrael, Vahagala of Isman Kori, the Imaru Mome, Yehe Shme Rabo Mivorach, Leolamul Ome of Maya, Yisparach, the Yishtabak, the Yispaar, the Yisraman, the Yisnase, the Yisadar, the Yisale, the Yisalal, Shme Kunishab. Lie lami kol irka sa vishira sa, tush vacha sa vnechema sa, da amiran vi alma vi yimurumami. Yehe shlomo rabo min shamayo vachayi, aleinu vi al kol yisrael vi yimurumami. O se shalom vim ramav, hu ya se shalom, aleinu vi al kol yisrael vi yimurumami. May God, who makes peace in the heavens, bring peace and comfort to you, Ronnie, to you, Barbara, to all of us, and all who knew and loved Stephanie. And may we say, Amen.
On behalf of the family, I thank all of you for coming here today. I'd like to thank Rabbi Gleefeld and those of you who spoke today. So everyone has been invited by the family to join them for a further time of fellowship and refreshment at the Town Tavern, which is located on Pearl Street, just a short ride from here, and everyone is welcome. Again, folks, we thank you all for coming, but this does conclude our service. Take care and have a safe journey.